Hello, Nuggets. Okay, so uh, I voted yesterday. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what it's like to vote in California. Anyone who's watching this who doesn't know anything about voting in California or in America or whatever, or what the process was like. So I wanted to originally take my mail-in ballot, my ballot rather, in and vote on the day uh, just because I don't trust the system. <laughs> All indications this year have been that you know, someone's trying to screw something over. Um, you know, particularly when one side starts calling out the other side for cheating, when there's really no evidence for cheating, kind of makes you think they're going to cheat, <laughs> right? Like it's the boy who cried wolf a little bit. Well, no, it's not that actually. But it's, um, anyway, it just feels to me like they're going to try and rip the election off. So the Republicans, I'm specifically talking about. Um, so I decided we were going to vote on the day, but we decided, you know what, let's do it now. We'll go, we'll take the risk, we'll put it in early, we'll get it counted, hopefully. Uh, and also we're in California, which is going to almost certainly carry Democrat, unless, you know, I don't think Trump's another Reagan. Um, so uh, there were some thoughts I had while researching the vote, voting. Um, first is uh, a website idea that can make a lot of money. It would probably have to actually be now I think about it, a, not pro a non-profit. But it's something that this country really needs um, because it's really, really hard to find information. You know, if um, the only thing I can compare it to is voting in England, which is a little different, diff different because you're voting for the party and in general you know the party policies and it's fairly straightforward. You either understand about the policy or you don't. You either want Labour because you know what they're about or you want Conservative or Lib Dem or whatever because um, you kind of know what they're about, right? Uh, it's a little different. It's more fragmented over here because even though it's a two-party system, a lot of what happens happens at the state level, not the federal level, not the country level. So even though Trump is running the country or Biden might end up running the country, actually that your day-to-day -day life is more affected at the state level but the news media is national, right? Most of it is national. So most of the information you're getting is federal. And it actually is not about the stuff that really matters in the election. In all honesty, it really doesn't, you know. So it's really hard to find information. So you'll get the ballot, right? And the ballot will have who do you vote for president is the final question. And then all before it is what do you think of state measure 12, 14, 15, 23, measure J, measure R, measure P, measure whatever. Um, all of these different things. Who do you want to vote for the uh, local courts? Who do you want to vote for this seat on the Chamber of Commerce? Who do you vote for? So it's all of the local election is involved, right? And that stuff that I would guarantee, I would be fairly confident in saying 99% of the people in any state have no idea what any of that stuff is because it's never discussed. You know, or it is discussed, but it's, it's very isolated. There's not a central resource. So if it's a television program that happens to be politicians talking about a concept, you might catch it. But it's so hard, like particularly with the judges, right? So I think there were four or five judges. I can't remember, them, maybe three. Anyway, there were some judges to uh, to be voted into the state, um, the uh, state supreme court. I think it was. I'm forgetting now. But we had to vote for judges. How the hell do you know who to vote for on judges? Like, how do you know? Like, and you don't want someone to come in and tell you like this is who you should vote for because now you don't know whether. That person, I'm starting to understand endorsements, right? Like, I always thought that endorsements, like uh, the, the, the firefighters endorsing a candidate or the police or the teachers union, I always kind of thought, like, well, what difference does that make? That doesn't make a difference to me. Like, I, I don't necessarily think the firefighters are great politically. I think they're great at fire, fighting fires. But I don't know if that means that they should be choosing who's going to, you know, run our government. You know. But the lack of information and how difficult it is to figure out who the hell is doing what and what their background is and what the measures mean and who these people are. Now those endorsements become relevant because that's the tribe that you tie yourself to. Right. So I think to myself as a voter, hey, you know what? I like firemen. In general, I, I agree with firemen. I know a lot of firemen or whatever. Well, obviously, I don't. 
Um, if they're supporting this candidate or this measure, I agree with them. I'm going to go and follow that. But we decided not to do that last night, Laura and I. When we sat down and voted, we're like, we're going to spend all night on this, right? Listen to me saying it like, but right, voting is a, it takes a lot more than just checking the boxes, right? If you want to do it, particularly in this country, it's a, it's a job, man. It's a job because it's confusing and there's no information there. And that's the website. There is information, but it's hard to find. That's the website that I feel that would really benefit um, this country is a go-to website and maybe it's there and we just don't know about it and it hasn't been advertised enough or whatever but it should be a website that you can go to that gives you all of the information because your ballot comes with the return envelope the ballot itself the return envelope um and it, a, a booklet that explains how to vote right and then a booklet that explains certain aspects of what you're voting for so it might list a little bit about the candidates or it will have uh, something written by a group of people supporting Measure R and a group of people that are against Measure R. So you get to see both arguments, right? But the way I'm laying it out with my hands here implies that it's really well organized and easy to understand. And it's not. It's like there's something supporting Measure R and there's something not. It's just it's not that bad because when you look at it you open up the page and it looks like it's supporting but there's no consistency in the design and maybe i'm oversensitive as a designer but you will have on one page you will have an article saying supporting measure r right and then a list of names here but there's nothing over here saying against measure r and a, not a list of names here a, something separate so now what is the list of names is the list of names supporting measure r or against and in some cases, it's simple and obvious, but this is a good example of poor design. So now the booklet that comes with it kind of helps. We did read the whole thing, and it kind of helps, but it's not exhaustively helping. It's not pure clarity that says, like, this is what it is. Here are the people backing it. Um, here's the history that you can find out about this person. And an unbiased view of that. It's not that. It's information. The other problem the limited information, the, the poorly um, executed information in the sample ballot booklet that explains some of the uh, aspects of what you're voting on. The other problem is it doesn't cover all of the aspects, right? So you're you're going through your ballot sheet and you get to measure R, R, and you turn, you go, like, oh, great, measure R. It's 30 pages on measure R. Oh, my God. All right, next one. Okay, judges. There's no judges in this book. So the book becomes another one of the things you have to check so you're like okay let's look this up firstly is it in the book hang on hang on no they don't mention any of this thing in the book okay so now go to the internet okay so where do we go on the internet how do we find this stuff on the internet let's call it measure r i don't even think there was there was an rr but let's call it measure r measure r how do we find out information okay so we just go in and we search it right Okay, so who are we going to search it through? Google. Okay, so Google's going to give us the information that it thinks we want because <laughs> yeah, Google's corrupt and we know that, right? All right, let's search it through DuckDuckGo, which is what I use, right? Okay, so now what comes up? Uh, well, the first thing that comes up is Los Angeles Times. Okay, let's look at what the LA Times says. Oh, no, you can't. You need a subscription. So I have to pay to get an opinion about the thing I'm supposed to vote on. Okay, we can't do that. Keep searching. Now we're going through this list and we have no idea of the context of these websites we have no idea what their agenda is we have no idea whether they are paid for by someone supporting measure rr you know like prop 22 let's do prop 22 if you're in california prop 22 is the idea that um companies like uber and lyft um should not should pay their contractors their drivers uh benefits right so yes on prop 22 says no they don't have to pay them it's basically like saying yes allow them to be independent contractors and they'll deal with their own health care no says no they're employees you should pay for their health care right so if you vote no on 22 you're saying no you can't just you got to unionize it's not unionized but you got to say they got to get benefits they got to get health care they got to get pensions they got to get whatever else comes with that benefit um, whereas if you vote yes on 22, you're saying no, Uber and Lyft don't have to pay them, right? 
So now, Yes on 22 has massive funding from Uber and Lyft. Of course it does. Like, literally, you can't go online if you're in California without seeing that ad on every website. Every single website has it. So it's almost impossible to get away from it. So now when I'm searching for information on 22, how do I know that they haven't paid for it? And, and the truth is, they have. There's a lot of websites that look completely normal and completely look like just someone saying, hey, here's the deal with 22 and 20. And if you do the research about it, you find out, oh, that was paid for by Uber. It's a sham, right? So this country really needs a website a place that you can go to to get information on the upcoming election and on voting that will help you. A one-stop resource, unbiased, right? In all honesty, I don't even mind to a certain extent if it's biased. It needs to be unbiased, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is one location that lays out what it is, even if it has an agenda. Because right now, I don't know where to go for that. I, you know, Laura was saying that LA Weekly used to do it, but we went to LA Weekly and we couldn't find it. And we went to different websites and we couldn't find a single resource that said, this is how, this is what these measures are about. This is, what, this, these are who the people who are running for uh, the courts. So in the end, what we did, <laughs> this is how complex it is. In the end, what we did is we researched what, other people thought we should do about getting research on the vote we were going to have. How fucking complicated is that? And it's not unreasonable. It's not a poorly educated masses. It's not me being lazy. That information just doesn't come into your life. The presidential does. I'm, f I'm fairly well, on f well informed on how both candidates, what they plan to do. I mean, I'm well informed as in they are, have not informed anyone. But I mean... That information is available to me and I find it. The local stuff is not available. It's just you can't find it. So we ended up having to go through, like we went for the for the justices, there's a there's a website called the LACD. I don't know, it's the um it's the Bar Association. LACBA, I think it is, the Los Angeles County Bar Association, where what they do is they take all of the people who are listed as candidates to become judges. And they literally just do whether they're qualified or not. They do votes by everyone within the, the county bar association. And they come back as either not qualified, qualified, well qualified, or extremely qualified, I think. By the way, no candidates got extremely qualified. So we have a poor choice this year. But that's the, literally the only measure Laura and I have. It's the only way for us to vote for in, with any kind of uh, understanding or knowledge the only way for us to vote for judges was to go to the LA County Bar Association and say, what do you recommend? Which, I don't know. I, I, I feel there should be a website that lists all of the people and it gives a bio on them, gives some relevant information, even if it's just links to like, here's a news report about this person. You know, oh, here's a news report that you might want to know about when this person went on a march, on a Black Lives Matter march or on a on a on a right-wing conservative march. Or this person, like stuff that, it's not invasive, because I don't agree with that, but stuff that they've done as a public figure, right? Um, we don't have that, so it was a little hard finding that stuff. Um, that's how we ended up uh, voting. Um, so I've talked about what else I want to talk about. Um, unbiased information. Yeah, so the other thing is unbiased. So the LA Times and the LA Weekly have traditionally been the resources you go to to get information. And basically, the tribe becomes not Democrat or Republican. The tribe becomes <laughs> the LA Times, right? You just end up following what they tell you what to do. Well, now you can't do that because they're not free, right? Which, I mean, good, they shouldn't be and all that. But if they're not going to be free and they're going to be subscription, which I understand, I'm not saying they shouldn't be, that should definitely not be the go-to resource for the general public. That's got to be a conflict of interests to say that this left-leaning newspaper happens to share my beliefs, right? But this left-leaning newspaper is the place where you go to get information and you have to pay them. That just seems wrong to me. It should be a free website. It should absolutely, totally be a free website. In a perfect world, it would be a government-run website an independent body that is always there and is nationwide, like literally voterinfo.org. And it's not just about 
how to register yourself to vote because that information is everywhere. It's about what is relevant in your upcoming election. Now, that website could be going 365, right? There are elections all the time. There are local elections. There are state elections. There are federal, county. There's all of these elections, board elections, trustee member elections, all that kind of stuff. So what if they had a government-sponsored website run by an independent body where all it does is give you every piece of information of every election coming up and who's involved it's just updated it it's, that's what we should do it's not that hard to do it's a lot of data but data's easy getting the you know managing the data isn't the problem it's building the infrastructure behind it i feel that this country really needs it especially now when so many people in this country are both uh, are voting based on their gut instinct fear and tribe they're not voting on knowledge. You know, that's one thing I think people outside of America don't understand. We don't vote on knowledge in this country. We don't vote for what's best for the country. As much as people say they do, they don't. They vote for the guy they like. That's all. They just vote for their tribe. It doesn't matter if it fucks up the country or not, you know, because the truth is both of the, both of the people that are up for re-election are no good this year. And they weren't last time either. And the time before that. Well, they were a bit better time before that. But just in general, they're not that great. The pe the good guys don't make it. The good girls don't make it. You know, The people who make it to the top are the people who aren't going to upset the status quo. Anyway, I'm getting political. I didn't want to do that. Sorry. Um, okay. Second thing is the ballot itself. Second thing. Fifth thing is the ballot itself. The ballot that you get is really confusing. I can't believe I'm saying this. How confusing can a ballot be? It's confusing. Laura and I spent a good 20 minutes, I'm not kidding, looking at this ballot, trying to find our name on it. And then we're like, where the fuck? Because we've got two ballots, right? We opened both of our ballots. We put them aside. And then we went, we're going to spend a night going to do that. That night comes up. We pull out this pile of papers. We've got two, three-page ballots. And we're like, wait, which is yours? Which is mine? We spent 20 minutes trying to figure out that. You know what the answer is? Neither. You don't need your name on the ballot, which is not intuitive. <laughs> That's counterintuitive. When I pick up my voting ballot, I expect to put my name on it somewhere. I know voting is anonymous. Maybe that's the issue. I don't know. But it's still fucking confusing. <laughs> really confusing that your name isn't on it. Your name is only applied for your ability to submit the vote. So in other words, it's on the envelope that you place it in. If you were to go into a booth and vote, they check your name and say, okay, this person's now allowed to, allowed to vote. We've got them, check them off the list, go into that booth, and the rest is anonymous. I guess I understand that, but when you get the ballot in the mail and you open it up, there's no name on it. There's nothing tying that ballot to you. That's fucking confusing to me. And how do you search for that? There's no information on that. We search like, where is my name on my ballot? Why isn't my name on my ballot? Where do I put my name on my ballot? Should I write my name on? None of this came up with anything. So I get maybe I was just being an idiot. <laughs> but it was really confusing to me. Very confusing. So that's it. Anyway, we did that. We, we finished the vote. Um, we finished voting. It took us about two hours, I think it was. And then we drove down to our local library at nine o'clock at night and dropped it in the in the ballot box. Very proud. Um, and that's it. So um, I don't know. I, my, my feelings on voting have changed. Like, I feel it was all a bit of a scam before. I, I, I'm a bit of a Russell Brand about the whole thing, if that makes sense to you. Like, I kind of feel like, Hey, you know what? I think this whole thing is contrived. I think they're all shitty. I think they all work together. The status quo is this is basically just rich people feeding us bullshit to keep us quiet. I've felt a lot of that. I'm not overly conspiracy theory in that, but I understand that is a bit conspiracy theory. Um, but this year, I kind of feel like, well, the only tool I have at my disposal to avert disaster is the vote. So even if underneath this all, I still think it's bullshit, I kind of have to vote. I kind of have to. And you should too. If you support Trump and you've lost your fucking mind, then you should vote too. Um, all right, you little nuggets. Go get your vote out. Bye.